Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, we'll be labeling image corners in a stunning gallery grid with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to pages, click on add new. We're gonna give this page a name, and then I'm gonna click on use Divi Builder. So for this example, we're gonna build everything from scratch. So I'm gonna click here on build from scratch. And then I'm just gonna close this for now because I need to go into our section settings and set our padding. So I'm gonna come over here to design spacing and we're gonna set our padding to zero to the top and zero to the bottom. So I'm just gonna activate this chain so that my amount here is also applied to the bottom. And then I'm gonna save. The next stage is to add my columns. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and add four equal columns. And then again, I'm gonna close this and go into my row settings. Now in here, I need to add a background color to my row. So I'm gonna come over here and add white to my background color. And then I'm also going to make some adjustments here. So I'm gonna click on the design tab, click on sizing. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is to activate use custom gutter width. And I'm gonna set this to one. Now what I'm doing here is pretty much reducing the space between all my columns. All right, so the next stage is to set my width here to 100%. And then also on my maximum width, I'm, I'm gonna set this to 100%. So that means as I'm designing this, all my designs will be edge to edge with no spaces on the top and the bottom because we reduced the uh, padding. And uh, because we adjusted our gutter width, there won't be spaces between our columns. So the next stage now is to go to spacing. And here again, we're going to remove the padding from the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna set this to zero, activate my chain. Now the next code I'm going to add is very important because this is going to make sure our four column structure is kept across all screen sizes. So to do that, I'm gonna come back over here to content and then I'm gonna to go to column one, click advanced, custom CSS, and I'm gonna add this to the main element. And this code that I'm adding here, you can find it on the, the post that I'll link to in the show notes below. So go ahead and add it to column two, column three, and column four. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've added all my codes to column one, two, three, and four. Now it's time to add our images. So I'm gonna add my first image to column one, so I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna click this plus button to add my image module. I'm gonna search for it and select it. So the first image here, in fact, all my images that I'm going to use are already in my media library. But of course, if you don't have these images, you can just use your own images for this design. So I'm gonna start with this image. I'm gonna click upload an image. Now over here on the link, I'm gonna make sure I activate open in Lightbox. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design, sizing, and I'm gonna force full width. And then I'm also going to go to my filters here and change my brightness to 50%. And now I'm gonna add my harvest date. So on my normal state, it's gonna be 50% uh, brightness. And then on the hover state, I'm gonna set this to 100%. So when you mouse over it, or when it opens in a light box, this is what you'll see. Next, I'm gonna come over here to advanced, click on visibility. And on the Z index, I'm gonna make sure that my Z index here is set to zero. So here, we're also going to add our hover state. So I'm gonna click here on this little arrow. So the, uh, the desktop is, is supposed to be zero. And then on the hover state, this needs to be set to 100. And then I'm gonna save. So as you can see, we've done quite a lot of uh, things to the settings of the image module. So to save us time, I'm just gonna duplicate these across the other three columns. And then I'm just gonna come over here and just drag it into position, just like that. So now that we have our images in place, we can go ahead now and go in and change these images. So I'm gonna click here on the module settings, click anywhere on this image, and then I'm just gonna change these images. I'm gonna click here to upload. I'm gonna save that, go to the next one. So you wanna go ahead and just change all these images here. So now that all my images are now added, the next stage is to go to column two, click on this gear icon to go into your module settings, click on design. So this time, what we need to do is to apply a top margin. So I'm gonna click on spacing, and the margin we're gonna add here is going to be 24.7 VW, and then save. So what I'm gonna also do here is to add a text module just below the image. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, search for my text, uh, text module, then I'm gonna select it. 
So in here, all we need to do is to add a number. So I'm just going to add 01. Next, you want to come over here to the background and make sure you set the background to white. Now let's go to the text settings. So I'm going to click here on design text. So the first thing we need to do here is to set our font. So right now it's set on default. So we want to change this to a font called Laura. So I'm going to search for it. And by the way, this is a free font. You can go ahead and just search for it. It's a Google font, so you can use it in your designs. Next, for my text alignment, I'm going to set this to right. So I'm going to come over here. And then uh, my text color needs to be black. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and just drag this slider all the way down here to the bottom uh, to ensure that it's set to black. Now, the text size, by default, it's set to 14 pixels. We want ours at 3VW. So it's slightly bigger. And then I we'll also need to add our line height. And the line height is going to be the same as my text size. So I'm going to come over here and set my line height. Now let's head over to the sizing. So here, what we need to do is to set our width to 7VW. And then we also want to add a bit of breathing space here for our text. So I'm going to come to spacing and I'm going to start here with my margin. So I'm going to set a top margin of 0.5VW. Next, I'm going to add a bottom padding of 2.5 and a right padding of 0.9. Now, let's head over to the Z index. So I'm going to come over here to advanced visibility. And for my Z index, I'm going to set this to 99. And finally, we just want to make this text a bit bold. So I'm going to scroll back over here to the design tab, click on text. And I'm just going to change this from regular to bold. And then we're going to save. All right, so now that we have this, the next stage is to clone this three times. Or you could also do a copy and paste, but to make things easier for me, I'm just going to clone this. All right, so now that I've cloned these, I just need to drag them into position. So I'm going to add one below this image here. Now, because I can't really see where everything is, the easiest way to drag and drop your, your modules is to click here on Expand Settings. And then you want to come over here to Wireframe View. And then just drag your text over like that. This one needs to come over here. This text module here needs to be above the image. And pretty much that's all we need to do. So I'm going to click here on my front and view. And this is how it should look. Now we're going to add a bit of styling to our design by adding negative margins. So I'm going to start with my text module number one here. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, click on design, spacing. So here I'm going to start with my margin and set this to minus 5.9. So now, as you can see, this number now is inside this image. Next, we're going to come over here to our box shadow and then you're going to choose this style. So let's start with our horizontal position. We're going to set this to 7VW. Our vertical position is going to be set to 5.9. Now over here for our blur strength, this needs to be set to zero and the same as our spread strength as well. And then now I need to add my shadow color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste the values of my color between the brackets like that. And for the spread strength, make sure this is set to zero. Okay, so there we go. And if you want to follow with the exact same colors and settings as I'm doing throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So pretty much this one is done. I'm going to save. Now we're going to go to the one in column number two. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm going to click on this gear icon, set this to 02. So now let's go into the design tab, text, and set our alignment to left. Now over here on sizing for our module alignment, we're going to set this to right. Now, as we did before, I'm going to come over here to spacing and set my, in fact, we need spacing and set my margin to minus 6VW and set my left padding to 0.9. And then make sure you remove the right padding over here. So as we did before, let's head over here to our box shadow, choose our shadow type. And I'm going to start here with my horizontal position and set this to 7VW. The vertical needs to be set to minus 6, the spread strength to 0. And then finally, I'm going to add my color. But notice that the color here, when I click on my eyedropper tool, by default, it has a transparency set to it. Set to it. So I'm going to drag the slider all the way up, and then I'm going to paste my color in here, like that. Moving on, let's go to uh, text module number three. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come over here to the third column, click on the gear icon, 
and let's set this to 0, 03. I'm going to click on design, spacing, and we're going to set our margin to minus 6. We're going to come to the box shadow, select our box shadow. And for our horizontal position, this is going to be minus 7. And here it's going to be minus 6. So let's make sure this is set to 6. And our spread strength needs to be set to 0. And as I did before, I'm going to come to my eyedropper tool here and uh, drag the slider all the way up and then paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same color as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so this is looking good. Now, let me go ahead, let me go ahead and save. And then we want to go to the fourth number. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, set this to 04. Click on design, text. The text alignment needs to be set to left and the module alignment needs to be set to right. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here until I get to sizing. All right, so here I'm gonna set my module alignment to right. It's time now to set our margins. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. So for our top margin, I'm gonna set this to 24 and my bottom margin is going to be minus six VW. And while I'm here, I'm gonna set my left padding and then delete the right padding that I have here. Now it's time to add our box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow, choose my style. I'm gonna set my horizontal position to minus seven. And my vertical position needs to be set to minus 5.9. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it here. And then on the spread strength, as we did before, set this to zero. And then finally, we're gonna set our shadow color. Now this time, this is gonna be a solid black color. So I'm just gonna drag the slider all the way up and this should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Now, I've only added four images here, but if you wanna go ahead and add more images, all you have to do is to come over here and clone the entire row. And then just go into each and every one of these, change your images and also change the numbers. So let's take a look at how this design looks so far. So I'm gonna save this page. I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder. And pretty much this is how our design looks. So as you can see, when I hover over it, my number disappears. And then when I click on it, this is now a pop-up, which is really cool. Close that. And this also happens to all the images. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.